We are going to make a foldable to help us with our X and Y intercepts. So you need a piece of construction paper. I went ahead and I just chose a white piece of construction paper, kind of boring, but I thought you could see it better. Okay, and then we are going to fold it down, not quite all the way to the end, but I want to leave, and it may be hard to see, but I want to leave a little border right here. So I'm not folding it in half. You can see that there's a little bit of a border right here. So fold yours not quite in half, leave a little bit of a border down here at the bottom, and that's where we're gonna put our title. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say finding X and Y intercepts. Finding X and Y intercepts. So we've already talked about this. It's just now I wanted to do something kind of fun, something different. Now I want to cut my top section into thirds. And we're just going to cut from this piece up to the top. That's it. And so if you want to be precise and use a ruler, that's fine. I am just going to eyeball it and I'm going to cut two cuts trying to put it into thirds and of course it's not perfect and if you want to make yours perfect by all means do that okay so now I have these three little flaps all right this first flap let's call the X intercept As an ordered pair, do you remember which coordinates the zero? It's the Y. All X intercepts have a zero for the Y coordinate. And then the X is whatever it happens to be for that particular problem. Okay. In the middle, let's write down AX plus BY equals C. And we really haven't talked about this, but this is called standard form for linear equations. Standard form for linear equations. What does linear mean again? That's right, they're going to graph a line. Okay, and over here on the third flap, let's write Y intercept as an ordered pair. Y intercepts always have a zero for which one? Y intercepts always have a zero for the X coordinate. And then the Y coordinate is just whatever it happens to be for that problem. Okay, let's flip up our X intercept flap. In the top piece, let's write find the X intercept. Okay, down here in the next section, let's write down our problem, which is 4x minus 3y equals 12. This equation is in standard form, where the x and the y are on the left-hand side and the constant is on the right-hand side. Okay, so from our notes, we found out that if we want to find the x-intercept, what do we do? We put 0 into the y. And that's because the y coordinate is always 0. 
All right, so I'm going to recopy the 4x. I'm going to recopy the minus 3. As soon as I see that y, I'm going to slap down parentheses, plug a 0 into it, and I'm going to recopy the equals 12. Now I want to solve this for x. So what's 3 times 0? 0. zero. That's gone. All you're left with is 4x equals 12. And what would you do to solve that? We would divide both sides by 4. And if you divide both sides by 4, you get x equals 3. Now, I just want to write that as an ordered pair. And what would that look like as an ordered pair? It would be the point 3, 0. The x coordinate always goes first. 0 was what we put into the y. And that's how we find the x-intercept if something happens to be in standard form. We just plug 0 into the y, work it out, and solve for x. Okay, let's go over to the y-intercept flap and do the same thing. We'll come back to the middle section. So clear over to the y-intercept flap, open it up. At the top, let's write find the y-intercept. And in the bottom section, let's go ahead and write down that same example. 4x minus 3y equals 12. And if you want to find the y-intercept, we're going to put 0 into what letter? We're going to put 0 into the x. So if you want to find the y-intercept, we put 0 in the x. So I'm going to recopy the 4. As soon as I see that x, I slap down parentheses, I put the 0 in there, and I recopy the minus 3y and the equals 12. 4 times 0 is 0. All you're left with is negative 3y equals 12. How would I solve that? I would divide both sides by negative 3, and that would give me y equals negative 4. Now what would that look like? as an ordered pair. 0, negative 4. The y coordinate is always the second number, and 0 is what we put into the x. So if you are given an equation, and you want to find the x-intercept or y-intercept, you're going to plug in zeros. And it doesn't matter if the equation's in standard form or if it's in slope-intercept form. It doesn't matter. You still do the same thing. So to find y-intercepts, you put 0 into x. And to find x-intercepts, you put 0 into the y, no matter what the equation looks like. Okay, let's go to the middle flap. And I'm going to work in this section down here, and then I'll go back to the top. So I want to draw a coordinate plane. The horizontal axis is my x-axis. The vertical axis is my y-axis. And then I'm going to draw in some um, markings. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I try to evenly space them if I can. Okay. Now, I actually want to plot my x-intercept and plot my y-intercept. So my x-intercept is the point 3, 0. Since the x is 3, I go right 3, and the y coordinate 0, so I don't go up or down. I know this is an x-intercept because it's on the x-axis. Okay, let's plot our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is 0, negative 4. So I don't go left or right, I go down 4. And I know that since it's on the y-axis, that that is called a y-intercept. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the line connecting those two points. So from a graph, the x-intercept is on the x-axis, and the y-intercept is on the y-axis. So that's how you tell from a graph. Very easy. Now, just to test your memories, what is another name for x-intercept? That's right. This is also called the zero of the function. 
So x-intercept and 0 mean the same thing. It's wherever the graph crosses the x-axis, and the y-intercepts where the graph crosses the y-axis. Okay, let's go to the top section, and I'm going to remind you how you find x and y-intercepts from a table. So let's just make a table. And you could make yours much prettier than mine by using a ruler. Mine is not looking so beautiful. Okay, and I'm going to plug in the points negative 3, 8, 0, negative 4, 3, 0, and 6, 4. So if you're ever given a table and you're interested in the intercepts, you want to be looking for zeros in your table because x and y intercepts always have a zero for one of the coordinates. So here I spot a zero and here I spot a zero. So I know these are my intercepts. Then you just have to remember which one's which. When the x coordinate is zero, you have found the y intercept. When the y coordinate is zero, you have found the x-intercept. And the x-intercept is also known as the zero. Okay, so in this foldable we talked about how you find intercepts three different ways. If you have an equation and you want to find the x-intercept, you put zero in y. If you want to find the y-intercept, you put zero into the x. If you have a graph, Wherever the graph touches the x-axis, that's the x-intercept. Where it touches the y-axis, that's the y-intercept. And if you have a table, that's when you want to look for your zeros. And when the x is zero, that's your y-intercept. And when the y is zero, that's your x-intercept. And there is our beautiful foldable. Very nice. Thank you.